Hi there, Mark here again, and welcome to part two of my CCO1 project, where we're trying to update this tired CCO1 Land Freeder into a Camel Defender trophy truck. In part one, we got rid of this old shell. We got this lovely Land Rover D90 Defender body kit, and got this far with it last time. So if you haven't seen that video, part one, check it out. And uh, in this video, hopefully, we're going to be getting to the end. Uh, I've got to find out. How to mount this, I haven't got a way worked out yet, but I'm going to try and use some Velcro, I think, to fit it on. But more of that in a minute. I'm going to try and fit the front of the body to this aluminium mount that I made at the front, but I do need to adapt that. And I'm going to get rid of these body posts at the back. Um, but let's have a look at the accessories I've got. So first of all, I've got some aftermarket wheels, dead cheap, off Amazon. They were £13 for the set. And I did try to spray them with the Camel Yellow, but I had a nasty reaction on all the wheels. So I rubbed them all down again. And what I'm going to be doing now is using some Tamiya Fine Surface Primer. And hopefully that won't react well. That's the plan. So I'm going to go off and spray those in a minute. In fact, I'm going to spray most of these accessories with the Surface Primer to start off with. Got the shovel and the axe. And I'm going to rub these down to get the uh, flash marks off from the mouldings and they'll be sprayed. I've got the, I think these are called sand boards um, for putting under the wheels when you get stuck in sand so they'll be primed and sprayed in silver. Again the fuel can and the fire extinguisher I'm going to give them a flat down and a spray. I've got the old Tamiya radio boxes that are going to go on the roof rack and uh, I'm going to spray those matte black. White primer's dry now and uh, I've got to say this is good stuff this Tamiya primer it really has covered, there's no uh, reactions whatsoever compared to the other paint I use. So it's gone on all these different types of plastic, uh, no problem at all. So this is ready for the silver now. I shall go and get my TS34 and spray the wheels in that camel yellow. I think I'll use a mixture of spray and hand brush paint on the accessories. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Uh, I've just been finishing off some of my bungee cords. So uh, just before I go, I'll show you, I'll probably fast forward it, uh, how I made that. So I'll just use this little screwdriver to wind the coils around, this little bit of wire I've got. So you just simply wrap it around a few times like that. And just squish those coils together with a pair of pliers. And there we have one end. Uh, just do the same to the other end and that's your bungee cord. Well, I'm really pleased that the painting went quite well. So the silver is looking quite good on those. They look uh, rather metallic now. The tools have got a metal ends on, so I'm gonna paint a bit of red in the middle and I'm gonna paint the handles black, matte black, I think, on those. Obviously need to do some detailing with these. And I'm really pleased with the way the wheels have come out. For such a cheap set of wheels, they look uh, rather good now, so I'm just going to get on with the laborious task of fitting all these screws and, or should I say the nuts and bolts, into the other three wheels. And uh, I'll get on with detailing these and show you how it looks after that's done. Okay, so I've made a start on the stickers, and I've got to say this is taking me a lot longer than I thought it would. I've put a few on the bonnet there, I've marked up the shut lines on the doors with a sharpie, and at the back you can see some of these stickers on. These are quite a nightmare, the stickers around the windows. And the reason for that is, as you can see, a lot of these are just really, really thin pieces of decal that you've got to cut out. And if you can see that one there, that separates for the, one of the rear windows. But yeah, trying to cut those out is just a nightmare. All of these frames have got to be cut out. And even though I'm not using the full set, so I'm not having to cut these out and stick them on because I've done those with paint and I'm not using these side ones. Yeah, it's taking me ages. So uh, I'll just carry on with that and then I'll get those Camel Trophy stickers and try and uh, get those fitted as well. I'll just show you the grill. I've sprayed it matte black. I haven't got any satin as it calls for, but it looks quite good. I've put the Defender badge on there and the little Land Rover badge looking quite good. So I'll just get on with that and I'll come back when I've got some more of the stickers done. And hopefully here you can see just how thin these stickers are. Or some of these stickers are you've got to cut out. Look at that. And uh, I did just use the scalpel, or sorry, the hobby knife, just to score down each side. I'm not even going to attempt to get the scissors near that thing. It is really tricky, but just go steady with the knife and you will get them cut out.
And the most fun you'll ever have putting stickers on is putting on these lights, the, uh, the tower light there and the indicator, and then you've got the circular one that goes over the centre, and then you've got to wrap this semicircle all the way around the outside. I don't think I'll be able to show you doing it on camera, but uh, yeah, I'll have a go. Yep, there's no way I was going to do that on camera and be able to get it in shot at the same time. Uh, it's really fiddly. I used uh, the lighter trick and heated it up just to get it to conform and it's somewhere near. Yeah, that'll do. Okay then, so that's all the kit stickers fitted on and a right nightmare it was, but it's done now. Doesn't look too bad. I've just started uh, fitting the accessories, so I fitted the front grill and uh, the light buckets. I haven't got any LEDs yet, um, but I'll see if I can source some later. So yeah, got to get these accessories on now. So you've got these bar goes across the window. You've got the bars either side that uh, go from that and fit into the roof. You've got your mirrors, obviously, holes for that. And there's four holes for the uh, wheel cover that goes on the back. And I've got to make some more holes. I've got to work out where they go. I need six holes in the top for the roof rack and three in the front for the wheel carrier. So this thing's going to have more holes than a piece of Swiss cheese by the time I finish with it. So I'll just get on with fitting these accessories and then we'll look at putting the camel stickers on. Well, there's no going back now, so I've started the extra holes. So uh, there's one in the bonnet. I've got a washer and a four mil screw. Gonna go in there to hold the, the wheel on the bonnet. So there we go. I found a useful one of those pesky Tamiya bushings just to uh, provide a bit of a soft washer type effect so it doesn't dig into the uh, polycarbonate. So we just get the, the wheel mounted on. So there we go and as you can see I've got a few stickers on. So all these uh, camel stickers are courtesy of RC Dump. Cheers mate. They're looking pretty good on there I think and uh, all I've got to do now is this bit that I'll not be looking forward to which is I've got to drill six holes in the roof and these are going to go through and split pins will hold those on or R pins so yeah I'll just uh, try and mark it up and uh, hopefully only drill the holes once else it's going to look a right mess. So I've temporarily held it in place with a bit of sellotape in about the right place and then I've just marked with a sharpie where I think uh, the hole should go so, wish me luck, I'm going to drill the holes now. Okay, so moment of truth. Let's see if they're in the right place. I've tried to keep them as small as possible, so it's a nice tight fit. Yep. Yeah. There's the one side. There we go. It looks like it was made for the job, doesn't it? It just fits quite perfectly, that does. Really chuffed with that. So that was from Steve at RC Crawlers Mid Wales. Cheers, Steve. So now I'm going to make a bracket for the back of the chassis to uh, locate onto the body. It's going to go across here. You can see the lines I've drawn there. I'm just using an old piece of aluminium sheet. Love working with this stuff. It's really uh, easy to bend into the right shape and to cut. If you've got a nice pair of tin snips like this, they're really old but they do a good job as you can see. It's really, it's like a cutting card really with a pair of scissors. So, I hope you can see that. Like I say, it's so easy to cut. Okay, I'll just go along there and then I'll fashion this piece and I'll show you how it's going to mount the body. So that's the plate mounted on the back of the chassis and made another plate. This is going to sit inside the back of the body and I'm going to drill some holes through and put some pop rivets through and that's going to sit something like that up against that bracket. I'll get the rivets in here and hopefully you'll see how it's all going to fit together. Okay so that's the plate finished. As you can see I've stuck it in the back of the body and uh, it's got a dual purpose because it stopped the back of the body wobbling around so I don't need those polycarbonate strengthening parts in. And what I've done, because my pop rivet gun's broke, is I've just put a 3mm nut and bolt one each side, you can see that. And they locate in the two holes you can see in that bracket on the chassis. So yeah, you just have to line them up. And you probably can't see, but yeah, look it's uh, attached now, it doesn't go anywhere. So yeah, no 
unsightly body post or anything and uh, that should be quite a good way of attaching the rear of the body so I'm just going to put some velcro in the front on that bumper and that's the body fixed OK, so we're getting there now. I've uh, fitted most of the accessories. So I've got my spade on the side, I've got the stuff on the roof rack, the wheel cover on the back, and uh, my petrol can. And on the other side you can see there's a fire extinguisher and the axe there. Uh, yes, yeah, so that's all done, the mirrors are on. And uh, yeah, I'm really quite pleased with that for phase one of this project anyway. But there is one last problem. And that is because the windows are clear, you can see all the gubbins straight through into the inside and I'm not really happy about that. So for this, like I say, phase one, the phase two, I'm going to fit a full interior, hopefully, and a driver and maybe a co-pilot and uh, get some LEDs, maybe a light bar on the top. But like I said, with this project, the beauty of it is it's endless, really. I could just keep going on. Might try and do a bit of weathering as well in the future. But I'll just show you my solution for seeing through the windows. Now, don't laugh. It's just this simple piece of plastic card. Um, it's kind of cardboard but reproduced in plastic, it's quite tough, it's very light and I know it looks a bit silly but I've got uh, me driver, is just one little driver figure I've got lying around, a Tamiya driver and I just didn't want it to look like it was a horseless carriage so uh, at least if I do a few shots, a few uh, running videos at first it'll look like there's somebody in there anyway so this fits in really simply I've just got some foam at the back where it slides under just here and there and simply a little bit of velcro at the front just to hold it in place so yeah as you can see now if I just pop it on okay and now you can't see all the electronics and especially that e ESC keeps uh, lighting up when I'm driving it so what I'll do now is I'll just take it outside and uh, take a few shots might give it a little bit of a run for you and uh, uh, yeah, that's it. That's phase one of it done. I uh, hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I hope to see you on the next video. Cheers.